Professor Gabor. I'm looking at problem 648, which is like problem 649, but it's not 649, so I don't have a problem doing it for you. Uh, here we see this is a Chicago Cheese Company that sells, sells this cheese product, and the number of cases they sell is 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Here's some probabilities. It's not unlike the Megley cheese in a certain sense in that uh, they're trying to figure out the right amount of cases to make to uh, minimize losses. So they sell the price of the cheese sells for $100. The uh, cost basis is looks like seventy-five dollars. So the profit, or in this case the marginal profit, if they sell one, if they sell, if they make one, another one, and they actually sell it is of course the difference between that, right? So it's going to be equal to 100 minus 75 and I say yes, 25 and let's make those all dollars and I don't need decimal places since we're not doing cents but what happens if they don't sell one? Uh, salvage price let's call it salvage price, is equal to, let's make this a little bit bigger, $50. So they sell it to a local food processor, so the marginal loss In other words, if they make a case and don't sell it, they lose. It's going to be equal to 75 minus, oops, sorry, equal to 75 minus 50. So it's going to be a loss of 25. Now the problem here is the loss and the profit are equal, which is going to make the thing in the denominator zero. We did this problem on Wednesday in class. So what we decided to do was to change this to, I don't know, let's say they sell it for 125. Now the marginal profit is 50, the marginal loss is 25. So if I want to look at it this way, what do we have? We have, if we look at the formula that we're supposed to calculate, if we want the probability that we're talking about has to be marginal loss divided by marginal loss plus marginal profit. So let's say the probability we want to be greater than or equal to and so how to make it greater than or equal to, I think I'll just underline that. Uh, it's going to equal, short-term memory being the first thing you go, marginal loss divided by marginal loss plus marginal profit, equals marginal loss divided by marginal loss plus marginal profit. So 0.33, so let's make it uh, three decimal places. Okay. So I've taken the demand in cases, I've taken a probability, and I've done what? I've um, wrote them down here. So now I want the CDF, the cumulative density function. And of course it's going to be equal to that right there. 
And I think I made every, everything bigger, so let's make it uh, ball size 14 here. And uh, then I add equals the previous plus the PDF. And it should add up to one, which it does. And I'm going to have one minus the CDF, one minus the CDF. Uh, so let's say make this to one decimal place. And one minus the CDF is what? Well, it's going to be equal to one minus that. Or it starts off at one. I think it starts off at one, actually. Let's see how they did it here. Yes, it starts off at one, and then they keep subtracting the previous. So it starts off at one. And it, then now it's equal to that minus that. And it should go down to zero. Okay, it goes down to <sighs> silly man. It should go down to equals that minus probability. So now it should go down to zero. It's down to point one. And let's make that bold. So I've got this. So if we bold this up, this number has to be bigger than this number. So it's, this is greater than P. This is, so, and they're all greater than P here. This is less than P. So, according to the textbook, which, and I don't do this often, This is the least of those. Then we should make 12 cases according to this. Yes? So I put a text box and say, uh, you know, whoever this person is, Teresa Granger, uh, should make produce 12 cases on an ongoing basis that will um, minimize her losses. So. That's how you do that without using QM. Now, question, how to use QM? Well, let's try using QM. I've got to first open it. Let's see if my buddy Howard J. Weiss shows up. He does. Enable macros, yeah. Okay, so I got my Excel QM here. And I want to do by chapter, and I'm doing inventory control, single period inventory discrete. And the, the title is 648. And the sheet should be 648. It never puts those things anywhere. And enter the number of demand possibilities. We seem to have five. Name for demand. Let's call it cases. And 
let's say OK. And of course, it always gives me this error. I don't know why, but then it gives me this. OK. So now I've got to put the numbers in. So this is 648QM. And this is 648 just Excel, just me using Excel. So I have 10 through 14 cases of demand. Demand, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So if, uh, if I do this, and what's my revenue selling price? Uh, I think it was, we said 125, and the cost was 75, and the salvage value was 50. And what else do we get? We have the probability. And here's where we had trouble last time too, right? It gives, this we said should be absolute value because they just did the because it's a cost so it's, we're always going to use it this way so we get our 0.333 it still works now if we put our probabilities in here what are they 0 0.2 0 0.3 0 0.2 0 0.2 0.3 oops 0.2 sorry 0 0.3, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0.1. So the order quantity, it gives us the answer right there, is going to be 12 because they got the same numbers we got, right? If I make this one decimal place, I don't know which is easier. I seem to like this better. I can construct it pretty easily on my own. QM, if you want to do it that way, you can. And then you'd put in a text box. So this is the order quantity would be 12 on an ongoing basis. Probably the demand will be greater than slow. So our 0.33 is, this is greater than 0.33, this is greater, this is greater. This is not, so you go to the next previous one where it was greater, and 12 is the answer. I hope this helps in solving that problem. Thank you very much.